allow me to introduce to everybody the Jerry Jones of baseball, the CEO and one of the 16 owners that represents the ownership group, John Stanton of the Seattle Mariners, has done nothing but lie and disrespect his fans for the last six years, maybe more. In case you don't know, and maybe Cowboys fans can relate to this on some level, but the Seattle Mariners are the only franchise in the entire Major League Baseball Association that has never even appeared in the World Series. Never. And what's crazy about this is the Mariners have had some of the best talent and one of the best teams ever in MLB history. But the Seattle Mariners actually hold the record for the most wins in the regular season, 116. Guess what? Didn't make the World Series. So we have a great fan base. Steady behind this team, desperate, desperate for us to be competitive at the next level, the highest level of baseball, the World Series. Just barely making the playoffs or just barely missing the playoffs has been some of the most frustrating shit I've ever experienced as a fan. As someone that's watched baseball and been a fan of the Mariners since I was a kid, I just can't take it anymore. And where John Stanton comes into play here is for the last three years, We've been so close to being highly competitive. He's promised a higher payroll. If you don't know, if you're new to baseball, baseball is no salary cap. Very much predicated on just how much are the owners willing to spend. Three years ago, he promised to raise the salary cap. Didn't do it. Two years ago, he promised to raise the salary cap. Didn't do it. This year, promised it again. Barely did it. It's so minute, it's barely even recognizable. Instead, what happened was one of our top pitchers, Robbie Ray, gets injured. Going to be out for four to six months minimum for this season. Over $40 million cap hit. Okay, We owe him that money. Got to pay it. Instead of writing that bigger check that he said he was going to write, instead what he did was cut two players that were essential for this baseball team that the fans loved to save that money and use their money that he's saving by getting rid of those guys and shipping them out to, to replace that pitching injury. The two guys he got rid of especially, and I said this all year last year, Eugenio Suarez is probably the most underrated defensive third baseman in the MLB. I swear, to, I watched almost every game last year. There were so many plays that that guy made at third base that should not have been made. This guy is unreal at third base. Unreal. And we have a huge hole on our corner or in our corner infield now defensively. He filled a massive gap. That guy took so many hits away all year. Couple that with the fact, even though he strikes out a lot, big time pull hit power. And in case you haven't noticed, pull hit power is the same as power going the opposite way now because they got rid of the shift. So you can have a one through nine lineup of pull hit power guys probably going to be fine if they're consistent. He was one of those guys. Just dinger, dinger, dinger derby with this dude. Ship him out for a bag of potato chips, okay? Then we get one of our young stars, up and coming young stars. I don't care what anybody says. Jared Kelnick, pass him off for a bag of potato chips. Young talent. People forget Jared Kelnick is young. He has so much more room to keep growing his game. He's improved so much over the last three years. And I promise you, watch this season be his breakout season. Watch this season be the year that Jared Kelnick comes up and becomes an everyday starter, borderline all-star player. Watch it happen. I swear to God. Another pull hit power guy. For some reason, people think that pull hit power now is this terrible thing. But maybe before when there was the shift, it was. But now that there's no shift, it doesn't fucking matter anymore. You can have pull hit power guys. It does not matter. Who consistently hits the ball hard doesn't matter anymore. So our ownership has shortchanged us again, cheap their way out. And it's just frustrating because the Mariners fan base especially deserves so much better than this. And... What's even more frustrating is we have a competitive team. And if you had kept those guys and still found additional pitching talent to make up for Robbie Ray, might be talking World Series here. Because what the GM and the president of baseball operations did on the back end to support this team, even though they didn't get that extra money, is good work. It really is. I think we have one of the best pitching, pitching staffs in all baseball. 
I really believe that. Just wanted to point out how much of a piece of shit I think that guy is before I get into the best and worst case scenarios for the Mariners this year. Let's start with the best case scenario. Here's the thing. Um, Brian Wu has recently been uh, reported as hurt with elbow inflammation. He's a pitcher. But I do think that our pitching, no matter what, is going to show up this year and be one of the best pitching staffs in the entire league. I think it is going to be lights out. We can depend on it. It's going to be the strongest asset to this team. I really do think that. What it's going to come down to is our offense and can we score runs. Now, the best case scenario, since we're starting with that, is Mitch Hanniger left field stays healthy, gets tons of plate appearances, jack and bombs. Just that dude's an elite talent when he's healthy. Julio Rodriguez, we know what he's going to be. And then, you know, you got the other corner guys that you might be switching in, Dylan Moore or Luke Rayleigh. Eh, Dylan Moore and eh, Luke Rayleigh. Eh. But if, you know, they just show up and be, you know, a, an average player, an average offensive player, we need the bats, especially. They would, it would do just fine considering we have Julio Rodriguez and Mitch Hanniger. That's an awesome lineup. JB Crawford's going to be one of the best shortstops in baseball. And with that added power, it seems he brought to his game from last season. Absolutely going to be an unbelievable player this year, an all star. Jorge Polanco and Josh Rojas. Okay. The defense is taking a hit. There is no doubt there. Uh, and the Mariners have, for some reason, had this weird thing where we sign somebody to play second base and all of a sudden they have the worst season of their career. So we'll see what happens. But Jorge Polanco is a very up and down hitter. I watched him last year a little bit and I've noticed he's a big power guy. So we'll see. But base, best case scenario... If he shows up he hits and he's hitting bombs and he can give us good defense, that's going to be a great improvement from last year. Third base, Josh Rojas, Urias, whoever. Um, they're probably going to rotate quite a bit between these two. Could be good. Josh Rojas especially, I think, has more upside in my opinion. Could be good. Just got to hope they can hold up on defense. Ty France, need him to go back to being one of the best hitters in baseball, hitting above 300 average. His defense is still trash. He can't run, so it kind of has to be that. If he's not that, he's kind of hurting the team. We'll see, but I would like to see him getting back to a place where you know we're putting him number two in the lineup. The big dumper, Cal Rowley, underrated catcher. I hope he plays as many games as possible. Great power hitter. I love him behind the plate uh looking at more guys on the roster kind of coming off the bench in a sense can zone has a potential to have a breakout season i hear people talking about how they think that maybe he could show up and have a total breakout everyday starter type season if that happens we're going to be in great shape uh another person i know he's injured right now but another person i think is highly underrated that we have on this team i'm probably the odd, i'm probably the odd man out sam Haggerty. i love the way that guy plays baseball I love the way that guy plays baseball. He's the fastest guy on the team when he's healthy. I think he has a decent bat, and all he has to do is really put the ball in play. I love him coming off the bench. He's kind of a utility slot player. Hope they keep him on the roster. So I think we can expect them, best case scenario, win the division, home playoff games, make a run at the World Series. At minimum, I would say a successful season would be making the ALCS. Winning the division and making the ALCS, I think that's a that's a positive year, and I'd be happy with that. Oh, now let's talk about the downside, which I think unfortunately might be the more likely thing to happen. Worst case scenario, and this would be the most frustrating outcome this year. The pitching staff goes lights out. I think that's a given. It's going to happen, but then we can't hit the ball on offense, and so we can't stay healthy. And we can't score runs. And we're losing games 1-0, to 2-1, 3-2, 3-1. Two to 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 and we're just losing those types of games all year. Because if Mitch Hanniger can't stay healthy and we have another crazy Jorge Polanco second base travesty like we've had with other second basemen and guys are struggling to play defense at third base and Ty France isn't looking like the great hitter he used to be, this could easily turn into like a 500 record maybe above, maybe slightly below, missing the playoffs by like one game again. That would be the worst case scenario. And I think that that could very easily happen. We are kind of betting on a lot of good things to go our way in the health department. And we're betting on guys to look like they're great bats that they've been in the past. And that doesn't always work out in Seattle for some reason. So worst case, 
right around 500, miss the playoffs by one game, best case, making a run at the World Series. I will give the Mariners front office credit. This team is a force to be reckoned with. And I do think that they put a team together that makes it exciting for us to watch because there's a very good chance that they could be highly competitive. I can't wait to see it. And that's what I think we can come to expect. But if shit hits the fan, I hope they sell the team. I hope they get new ownership because truthfully, I feel like even just like 30 or $40 million more in cap to spend would make a massive difference for this team. I don't want to make it sound like that's a small amount of money, but when you have multi-billion, billion, billionaires that are owners of your baseball team, I'd like to think that we could spend a little more sometimes. But that's also the beauty of baseball. And I, that's why I actually kind of enjoy that baseball doesn't have a salary cap because I like seeing teams go up against the guys that are spending $300 million plus on a, on their on their salary for the year. And then you got a team that's spending half the money that's going to try to compete with them. Can be frustrating, but I also love it because it's kind of like that beautiful underdog story type. So it is what it is. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this Mariners team. I can't wait to start breaking down these games. I will see you in my next video. Can't wait for opening day tomorrow.